You're watching the Love Thy Neighbor Podcast Network. Hey guys, it's Anthony Wilson again, the host of the Love Thy Neighbor Podcast Network, and this is your show to be equipped, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to do the work and the will of God. One of the things that um, is near and dear to my heart is the subject of the will of God. There's so many people who don't know, like, which way do I go? How do, what does God want me to do here? What does God want me to do there? And it can be so confusing. It can create so much anxiety. Well, today we're going to talk about the importance of seeking the will of God. And we're going to dive into a way that we can be more solid on what God's will is uh, in our lives. Um, as always, uh, this podcast thrives on your involvement. If you have any thoughts, questions, or personal stories or comments related to the this, this subject, please, 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 please chime in. Please share. Um, there's a few scriptures that we're going to look at today that are going to help me to talk about uh, seeking God's will and why it's so important. Um, the the first is Colossians 1.9 out of the Amplified uh, Classic, and then I'm going to look at Ephesians 5.17. Uh, let's start with Colossians uh, 1 9, Amplified Classic. And here's what it reads For this reason, we also, from the day we heard it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will in all wisdom, in comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God and in the understanding and discerning of spiritual things. These, this verse is not just a prayer. It's an invitation. It's a beckoning. It's a calling uh, into the deep, the deepness of God's mind. We're looking for God's insight. We're want to grow in our discernment and our revelation for our lives and our situations. We were sharing this um, in a men's retreat. One of our pastors was teaching on this particular passage, and it hits so hard, this idea of a full, deep, and clear knowledge of God's will, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding with comprehensive insight into his ways and his purposes. This is important because this is what we need. We need the insight. We need it to be clear. We need to understand um, God's ways and his purposes in order to really discern God's will. Now, how do we put this into action? How do we really seek God's will in our daily life? Uh, I know some of you are probably wondering that, like, wh what is it that will help me to know that this is the way that God wants me to go? Well, first, uh, we have to have a dedicated prayer life. So many people uh, their prayer life is hit or miss. The people that I know that have a dedicated prayer life, they're not as um, unsure of what God wants as the people who don't. The people who actually set aside time and pray, uh, life can push us into reactive praying, right? Praying only when we're faced with challenges. When something comes up, we want to pray. But Proactive praying is where the key to understanding lies, taking time daily to approach God, not just with our requests, but with an open heart to learn and be led by God. Uh, man, we, we, we need this. We need to come to God ready to hear, drawing near to hear, not just to speak. Second, we've got to abide in God's word. Uh, the Bible is God's word, and it is a treasure trove of his revelation and his understanding of what he wants, his ways, the way he wants things done. And sometimes I think we don't know God's will because we don't understand God's ways. And when we don't understand God's ways, it's hard to know which way he wants us to go. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about that, man, if I don't understand how God does things why God does things, 
you know, the direction. And we have the word of God. We have a way to understand um, his ways. David said to teach me your ways so that I can walk in them. Um, understanding and applying the scriptures brings us closer to knowing God's heart on various issues. When we go to the word of God, we want to know, well, God, should I worry about this? <laughs> Scripture answers that question that should I be worrying? No, take no thought for tomorrow, for today has enough troubles of its own. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things you need will be added to you. God, we want to understand God. Too often we're going to God because something's going on in our life and we need an answer. And a lot of times that narrows our scope and it limits you know, our understanding of this full relationship that we have with God, where he has a purpose and a plan that there to everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. So things that are going on in our lives, God already has an opinion on how things should go and what we should do in those situations. Instead of us reacting and saying, okay, God, what's going on here? I need an answer. We'll, we'll go to the Bible and we'll get an answer, but are we really getting to know God's will, his ways, what he desires, or are we just pulling answers? And so lastly, we need to cultivate a listening spirit. Ah, sometimes you're going to have to just be quiet. As the scripture says, be still and know that I am God. When we're hunting for God's will, it's not just about speaking out prayers or reading the Bible. It's also about becoming still and silent and listening. It's in those quiet moments that God whispers truth and gives us insight into the various things that are going on in our lives. How many want that? How many want to be able to still yourself and sit in the presence of the Lord and receive from him in this fast paced world, in a world where Oh man, everything is going a thousand miles an hour. Everything is the click and, and, a, and a flip of a button. What if we slowed down? What if we took a minute? And we said, God, I want to draw near to here. I want to know your heart, not just get answers to my problems, not just get solutions to my problems or answers to my questions, but I want to know your heart. And so I want to be quiet and be still so that you can speak to my heart. Oh, man, you can talk to me. You know, some people say, well, oh, God doesn't speak to people anymore. Oh, that's because you haven't slowed down enough. You haven't taken that time to develop a listening spirit, a spirit that allows God uh, to coach you and guide you and move you and nudge you and direct you. Oh, God, that's what we need. We're going a thousand miles an hour. And sometimes it's important just to be still and to slow down. Let's look at uh, Ephesians 517, same uh, Amplify classic. Here's what it says. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Ah, do not be vague. I can work on that all day. This idea of vagueness that, you know, uh, I think God wants me to go over here. Or I think God wants me to go over there. Or I think God wants, no, 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 no. Slow down again. Be thoughtful about what it is that the word says. Don't be foolish, which means uh, don't move quickly without thinking things through but have understanding and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. These two verses, when I put them together, they are telling us that it is possible to know God's will for our life in various situations, overarching in our life, that he wants us to know what the will of the Lord is. He doesn't want it to be hidden or vague or something that you can't find that you just got to go do stuff and it just happens. Everything that happens in your life, that doesn't mean that that was God's will. You have to firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. You have to be able to look at a situation and say, that wasn't God's will. God actually wanted me to do this and I did that. And scripture gives us 
a layout. Let's say someone mistreats us. Let's take something as simple as somebody mistreats us. The will of the Lord in that situation is for us to bless those who curse us and pray for those who despitefully use us. Let's say uh, somebody hurts us. What is God's will for us to forgive as we have been forgiven? See, when you really get the word of God in you and allow God to speak to you, he will speak to you according to his word. Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance the things that you have spent the time uh, reading and studying and absorbing. David said in Psalms 119, 11, your word, O Lord, have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against you. That term hidden means to hoard it, to keep it, to store it up, to treasure it in your heart so that you won't sin against him. I want you to understand something that you're going to have to challenge yourself. You know, as, as you're listening here, I want you to challenge yourself to become more clear minded, to slow down. As you're reading, slow down. Don't just read through passages at 100 miles an hour. Okay, I read a whole book of the Bible. No, you're going to have to digest it. Be deliberate in your pursuit of understanding God's will. Not just tossing casual, thoughtless prayers, but being consistent and seeking clarity daily in your life. I mean, be consistent about this. Waking up, asking God for that full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will with all spiritual with all spiritual wisdom this means that comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of god god i want to know your ways because if i know your ways then you'll guide me into what your will is uh this week uh, if you don't have a prayer schedule some people don't they just pray randomly right and i get that you know, I, there's times throughout the day where I'm praying that's not scheduled, to, but have a time that you set aside and say, I'm going to spend this time with the Lord. I'm going to pray and seek him. I'm going to open my word and let him speak back to me through the passages that I read. Then I'm going to be still, open up a journal and reflect on what God is saying. So pray, study your word and journal what God is saying, what he's revealing to you. And God may not speak to you in a voice. Let me make that clear. Because some people are looking for a voice. So-and-so, this is the Lord your God speaking to you, right? God may not speak to you in a voice, but there is a sense of him moving you guiding you in a direction, giving you impressions of things, giving you uh, pictures of things. As you're studying the word, you start seeing what you need to do, how you need to do it, why you need to go back and apologize to this person, why you need to go back and make a situation right that at first you felt like you were justified in it. But after spending time in God's word, spending God time in God's presence, you go back and you make that thing right. Ah, oh, God, thank you. That's what God wants us to do, because that time that we spend with him, being still and quiet, asking the Lord for his will, for an understanding of what he wants and what he desires, we are going to then be more confident living in God's will. Above all, remember to approach God with the expectant heart, because searching the depths of God's will is not this futile uh, exercise that you just do like, okay, I prayed for God's will. I guess he'll show me, oh, it rained today. Then it's God's will for me to stay home. <laughs> you know, and, and forgive me if it seems like I'm making fun of that, but sometimes that's what we do. We base God's will off of things that have happened. I got a flat tire on the way to my new job. Oh, it's not that, that means it's not God's will for me to take that job. That's not how that works. Knowing God's will is about knowing him and understanding his ways and following after him. It is a fulfilling endeavor to offer uh, that offers peace and direction and knowledge. And it deepens the relationship with our heavenly father when we pursue his heart, his desire, his mind on the things that we're doing. Um, let's take a, a minute. You know me, <laughs> those that have uh, been around me a while. I like to look at the words and let's break some things down. Let's seek a deeper and more meaningful understanding of the words. 
uh, sometimes we, we, we don't understand these words. And so let's look at the Greek term philema, philema. This signifies a simple or profound act of desiring or wishing something. So let's slow that down right here. Let's pause. And if, even if you had to pause the video and go look up the word, go ahead and look it up. Get your strongest concordance, your concordance out. Um, you know, I usually have it on my phone and I can just go and pull something up. What I do is I Google a passage. So like, uh, if I'm looking up God's will, then I'll go to a passage like James, uh, chapter four, right. And I'll go to Strong's and I'll scroll down to, uh, the verse that talks about God's will. And so in James chapter four, if you go down to verses uh, 13 through 16, what you ought to say, here it is, is if the Lord will. And I click on will and it's phileo, which is the root word of philema. And this word uh, gives us the idea of God's best offer, his preferred will. And so you got 2309, which is phileo, and then you have 2307, which is philema. And so philema is often referring to God's preferred will, i.e. his best offer, uh, which people can accept or reject. Now, here's what's interesting is that this idea of God's will it embodies what we refer to as God's preferred will, his divine plan, his best offer to us, his children. And it's an offer that we can accept or reject. Now, here's what's interesting. The term carries with it this suffix. Remember, I was telling you the suffix, which brings our focus to the expected outcome of this desire, the wish. Philema finds its profound usage predominantly in referring, referring to God's will, what God wants. So when you put the, the MA on it, it's focusing on what is wanted to happen and his preferred will for us. Um, it garners occasionally this will be used for people, for men. Most of the time when you run across the term thylema, it is focused on God's will. And so looking at our verse uh, in Colossians chapter one, verse nine, we see thylema um, is etching God's deep seated purpose to show his blessing to all mankind through his son, Jesus. That the great, full, deep and clear knowledge of God's will is centered in the fact that Jesus came, died, rose again, and is now seated at his right hand, overseeing us so that we could be saved, making intercession for us. And for us to really understand that at a deep level, that we are covered mm, by the redemptive act of Christ, it changes us and it helps us to walk in a more fruitful way when it comes down to God um, in Ephesians 5, 17, it's a little different. It unfolds as a reflection on what God desires for us to do. Ephesians 5, 17, uh, know what the will of the Lord is, that we are to go and do something, not just know something, but do something. In uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse one and two, you have another example of knowing what to do. And so he says in Romans chapter 12, verse one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service or worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For what reason? So that you can prove or show what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? What is it that he wants you to do? It is the will of God that you give yourself totally to him as a living sacrifice. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to not be conformed to this world because in doing that, you show people what God's will is. When we hold back and 
We don't want to give ourselves totally to the Lord. When we live our lives according to the ways of the world, we distort and we cloud and we hide the will of God from people who might want to know what it is. They can't see it because you're not living it. Ah, man, this is why we have to pursue God's will regularly. Now, understanding this, this is a call to align ourselves, not just with our own desires, the things that we want, but to the greater plan of God, his preferred will, um, a promise of something greater than ourselves. That, because the things that we want are fleeting and material. Forget about that. What God wants is eternal and enduring. And so I think as we uh, are, are living our lives daily, we should strive to understand not just what we want, because I think knowing what we want helps us to separate what we want and then begin to look at what God's purpose is. We want to comprehend the Thelema his preferred will, the things that he desires because they're bigger than us. They are eternal. They have more to do with God's ultimate plan than just me uh, coming up. I told somebody the other day that if God blesses me with a million dollars, then that means he has a million dollars worth of ministry for me to do because I understand the will of God for my life. The will of God for my life is to make disciples, equip the saints, build uh, build up the body, bring unity and maturity to people. And so if God puts resources in my hands, I'm going to direct those resources to doing his will. So often we're praying for God's will. And what we're really asking is, can I have this or can I have that instead of asking which way do you want me to go and what is the purpose and the plan that you are executing through me going in that way? I'm working on a book. Uh, some of you guys already know because you helped me, you know, <laughs> pick out the cover. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Now, people hear that and they say amen, but they don't understand the responsibility that is in that statement that if it's God's will, it's God's bill. That means that we have to first determine if we are operating in God's will, because if it's not in God's will, then it's not his bill. He doesn't have to sponsor it. He doesn't have to uh, pour resources into it. If it's my will, if it's about what I want to do, if it's about the things that I desire that I didn't get as a kid or, or, or I want to accomplish with my life, I've always wanted to do this and I'm praying, is this God's will? then I'm already off base because I need to be seeking God's will and then allowing God to uh, funnel and support what it is that he's doing in my life and through my life instead of trying to do things and then asking, is this God's will? <laughs> it's backwards. And this is why I say, you know, uh, as we reflect on the steps that we talked about, a dedicated prayer life, you're constantly in the presence of the Lord seeking that exchange. Uh, remember, we taught on prayer and prayer is an exchange. I come to God with my will and my desires, but I leave understanding his will and his desires. And so in prayer, there's an exchange. Uh, remember Jesus in the garden. Uh, Father, uh, if there's another way, please take this cup from me. That's his desire to take this cup. But nevertheless, not my will your will be done. So I may come into prayer saying, God, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to do that, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. And I'll leave prayer with what God wants me to do, how he wants me to treat this person, how he wants me to interact in a situation, what he wants me to do. Because a lot of times God's will is bigger than our problem. God's will is about a greater purpose. And so this is why we need a dedicated prayer life where we're constantly praying with the idea of hearing and listening, abiding in God's word, really abiding in God's word is going to help us to know his ways, to know his desires, to know how he thinks about things, because our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how much greater his thoughts and ways are than ours. And so we're going to have to get into his word because he's revealed his mind, his heart, his desires, his will, his ways in his word, and then cultivate a listening spirit, 
taking quiet time to reflect upon the things, uh, my, my prayer life, uh, my reading of the word and letting God download, divinely download what it is that he desires in my life. Oh man, this is so good. Um, as we wrap this thing up, my prayer is that this encourages you and helps you um, to really seek God's will in your life in a deeper, more intentional way. Because so often we're thinking, well, if that happened, then that's God's will. There's a lot of things that happen in this world that are not God's will. And it's not that God doesn't know they're going to happen. It's that God allows us the freedom to make choices, to accept or reject, to accept or reject. And God will offer his best offer and we can accept it or reject it. Just like salvation through Christ is his best offer and it can be accepted or rejected. And so there are things in day-to-day -day situations where God is giving you his will and you can accept his will because sometimes his will is uncomfortable. <laughs> sometimes his will puts you in situations where other people don't agree with his will. The apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, when you read throughout your Bible, they were put in circumstances or situations where someone came against them for doing God's will. And it wasn't that God's will was for them to suffer, but in doing God's will, they did suffer. But they had a peace about it because they knew that this was the will of God. They knew that God was going to take care of them throughout this search, this situation and the circumstance. And so this week, um, and I want you to shoot your questions to me about this subject, because God's will is a subject that I've studied on a lot and I've worked on it a lot. And in my book, I break down a lot of things uh, in depth about God's will, but I really want us to seek out God's will. We can know it for our lives, for our marriages, for our children uh, and how to parent them and on our job. What is God's will in these situations? And and so definitely uh, seek out God's will. And for those of you that have been supporting us, thank you so much. For those of you that have reached out and blessed, and I would call out names, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, bring any embarrassment to anyone. But there are people that have blessed us just out of the blue and just given and just blessed us so that we could keep doing this on a regular basis. And so uh, as I conclude this, send me your questions, your comments, concerns. And remember until next time to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and share this content with others. Thanks for watching. God bless.